All right, so you've now seen the overall anatomy of the kidneys. Now we're ready to talk about the idea of the nephron. But first I wanted to just recapitulate something we talked about before, the schematic of the nephron. So let's sketch that up really quickly here. So the idea was we had blood coming in. And then we've got some mechanism here where we're going to have filtration happen. That's where the blood is going to enter this structure, the urinary tubule. And then our blood is going to then pass along alongside this urinary tubule. And then the urinary tubule is going to lead away. And my blood vessels are going to return back towards circulation. So remember, we had four stages of this process. Stage one was filtration, where about 20% of materials smaller than protein leave the blood. Then, after that, we've got the process of reabsorption. where we are selectively moving things from this urinary tubule back to the blood. So this is the urinary tubule. Reabsorption, we're selectively moving things from the tubule back to the blood so that we keep them. And we also have secretion, where we are selectively moving things from the blood to the urinary tubule to get rid of them. Then excretion was here. So this is a schematic diagram of one nephron, one filtration unit, where we have one set of blood vessels coming in, filter, reabsorb, secrete, and then this would be where the nephron feeds into the collecting duct, which is draining down toward the renal pelvis, whereas this is heading back toward that venous return out of the kidney. So. That's the schematic idea, but now we want to get into the actual anatomical details. And that's going to be a fairly complicated diagram, so leave yourself lots of room. Okay, I'm going to remove this. Okay, now it's going to look a little bit like what we just did, but more so. So let's start over here. Now, first thing, we're actually going to give this vessel a name now. This is the afferent arteriole. You may remember that. This is the small blood vessel that's coming in up here in the cortex. Eh, while well, we're at it, why don't we actually draw in the border between the cortex and the medulla. All right. So my afferent arteriole feeds into a tangled little set of capillaries that we call the glomerulus. I'm going to put that up here. This is the glomerulus or the glomerular capillaries. We'll talk about them in detail uh, in the next lecture when we talk some about filtration. Those That glomerulus then feeds out into another arteriole, the efferent arteriole. Now notice this is a little bit different. We normally talked about blood supply being arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, veins. But here we have one of these unusual ones where we have an artery to an arteriole to a capillary and then to an arteriole again. And that's going, then going to lead to another set of capillaries. So kind of interesting. We'll keep, keep that in mind. Now, this glomerulus is encased in the first part of the urinary tubule, which we call the Bowman's capsule.
So this is the first part of the urinary tubule, which I'm showing here in black. That urinary tubule then feeds into a compli uh, hold off on drawing just for a moment, a complicated curvy bit that we call the proximal convoluted tubule, also known as the PCT. That is going to tangle itself up with a set of capillaries that came off of this efferent arterial. I just get a kick out of drawing this part. These capillaries here, these are known as peritubular capillaries. I'm running out of places to draw this stuff. So these are known as the peritubular, like around the tubule capillaries. So here, where the blood and the urinary tubule come into close contact, that's a good place for things like reabsorption and secretion to happen. This was where filtration occurred, but this is where we're moving stuff back and forth intentionally between blood and tubule and tubule to blood. Now, after the proximal convoluted tubule, my urinary tubule goes through this interesting thing where it forms sort of a long turn that goes at least a little bit, and in some nephrons, quite deeply into the medulla. This structure here, this is the loop of Henle, or sometimes just called the nephron loop. Either name is okay with me. Uh, depending on which of two different kinds of nephron we're in, there's two different ways the blood vessels could be arranged around this. Uh, in one case, they're just regular peritubular capillaries. They would look a little like this. I'm going to draw the other one here just for, just for the heck of it, which is that they're arranged in something called the vasa recta. And the vasa recta are a really interesting set of vessels that kind of go alongside the loop of Henle. So I'm going to write these in as the vasa recta. But keep in mind that they are, that's only in certain, certain kinds of nephrons. Now, after the loop of Henle, our urinary tubule does another twisty turny bit called the distal convoluted tubule. Or DCT. That has its own set of peritubular capillaries around it. That DCT then finally will add on to a collecting duct. That collecting duct is going to take the stuff that is now on its way to becoming urine down toward the renal pelvis. And that goes down through the medulla. So this is one way of drawing a nephron. However, and this is a common way of doing it, and it's very useful. You can easily see the pathway that things follow here, but there are some problems with it. One problem is that it's a little unclear on how all of these blood vessels are hooked together. Another problem is this. For reasons we'll get to, it's important that this spot right here be able to talk to the smooth muscle here at the afferent arterial. Right now, those are a long way apart. So we need these things to be close together so that they can communicate with each other. That's going to require us to, sh that's going to require me to show you why this is actually kind of a lie. 
The way I've drawn this, while it's useful for seeing it, is not anatomically accurate. So in a moment here, we'll draw how this thing is actually arranged. Okay, if that one was the lie, now let's talk about a more accurate nephron. So let's draw in our border between cortex and medulla. You may, you may want to um, hold off and wait to see how this comes out before trying to follow along yourself, because it's going to get a little complicated and it's kind of more tightly packed. But we're going to start just like we did before with our afferent arterial feeding into a set of glomerular capillaries. And then that's coming out onto an efferent arterial. So there's our afferent. And there's our glomerulus. And as before, the glomerulus is surrounded by the Bowman's capsule, which is going to feed into the proximal convoluted tubule. which is going to lead into the loop of Henle. But unlike before, my loop of Henle, when it curves around, is going to come back up right in front of the Bowman's capsule. And it's actually going to go right around the afferent and efferent arterioles. Then it's going to loop back and tangle itself up with the proximal convoluted tubule. And that's where it's going to join on to the collecting duct. This is where other nephrons are joining onto the same collecting duct. So one thing you see here is that our proximal convoluted tubule and our distal convoluted tubule are kind of tangled up together right here. Now for the blood supply. My efferent arteriole is actually going to split off some vessels here. Those are going to become the vasa recta, which are going to go down alongside the loop of Henle and then back up between the loop of Henle and the collecting duct. The other part of the efferent arterial is going to get itself tangled up with the proximal and distal tubules here as peritubular capillaries. And then the whole mess is going to head back toward the renal veins. So very briefly, I'm going to switch back to the, to the other version and recapitulate why it was a problem. So this one was inaccurate because we didn't see how the blood vessels around the proximal tubule and distal tubule and the loop of Henle connected to each other. And this thing here right at the ascending part of the loop of Henle needed to be near the afferent arterial. So now if we bring this in, you can see that the blood vessels around the two convoluted tubules are actually the same set of blood vessels, and that the vasa recta blood vessels came off of the afferent arterial and joined back up with the peritubular capillaries here. Finally, this thing here, where the part around the ascending loop of Henle, notice that's on the second part of the loop, is right here, and it is positioned right next to the part on the afferent arterial that we needed it to talk to. So now these two things are right next to each other and can talk to each other. This is the more accurate version of the nephron. It's compact folded back in on itself, but it puts everything in the right places. It also has a few other advantages. For example, these blood vessels going down along the loop there are reasons why we want this side to be between 
the descending loop of Henley, and the collecting duct. So I'm going to just draw in a couple more, and so give this a few more labels. Uh, going back to this one briefly, this was the descending side of the loop of Henley. And this was the ascending side. On this diagram, the more accurate nephron, this is the descending loop. This is the ascending loop because it loops backward on itself. So descending, ascending, which means that the vasa recta, these blood vessels, go down along the ascending side of the loop of Henle, where the material in the loop is flowing this way, and up along the descending side. That actually is important later on. So that's the more accurate version of the nephron. You should be, f you should be familiar with either the, the sort of unfolded version or this folded version. Um, they're, bo they're both important. Okay, so I think that covers the layout of the nephron. Uh, I would actually probably practice drawing those and labeling things like the proximal convoluted tubule, the distal convoluted tubule, which here is the same thing. It's, well, not the same thing, but they're right next to each other. The Bowman's capsule, the glomerulus, peritubular capillaries, collecting duct, all of that. Okay, so that pretty much finishes the first urinary system lecture. When we start the next one, we're going to be starting by talking about the details of filtration at the glomerulus and then the Bowman's capsule, and then some of the details of reabsorption, which is kind of happens all along this thing. Okay, we'll see you next time.